so happy for that. Um, but here is our official start. And we are going to start lying down. So I know we did a standing practice yesterday. I hope you enjoyed that. Something a little different, more for proprioception. But today we're going to start lying down. So please take yourself down onto your mat into a comfortable position. So a little replay of, so part of my reason for doing 11 days is that I wanted to give you an, a feel for when I, when I go through what makes sense in my brain of how to, how to do somatics as far as what parts of the body do we work with first and, and what, what makes sense from a somatic standpoint. Because you know, what will often happen is somebody will come in with chronic pain in their neck or their shoulders and I'll start working with their pelvis and I think they, they're about to ask for their money back. And then they'll have a release in their shoulder and go, huh, right? So, so th I think I mentioned the, the joke is that we always kind of look a joint or two away from where the pain is, that oftentimes that's where some of the problems are. But in, in, in uh, reviewing what we've done, we started with the pelvis, we did the legs, we did the arms, so we're coming back in is my feeling. This is the way I like to do it. We start from the center, then we go all the way out to the periphery, coming back in. Yesterday was a standing practice with something a little different, more for proprioception, but now we're really coming in. We're going to work with what I lovingly call the two girdles, your pelvic girdle and your shoulder girdle. And so really that is, as you're lying down there for a moment, we're going to GPS ourselves and land and locate and just become familiar with these two areas. So the pelvis, feel all the way around or image and experience the circumference of your pelvis if you need to shake your legs out to relax them. By the way, when we're doing most of these movements, your legs will be in constructive rest position. But for now, if you want to extend your legs, you're welcome to. If in that leg extension there's any discomfort, please put a blanket underneath your knees to keep the low back soft and long. Okay, so you're lying down to start and you're locating your pelvis, the whole circumference, and notice what parts of your pelvis are resting on the ground. So can you feel, sometimes we can sense there's more weight in one hip than the other, or you might even be able to feel the one hip feels higher or lower than the other. And maybe it feels symmetrical, that's, that's all, all good too, and sometimes we don't feel anything, and that's part of the experience too. So we, we invite it all, what we feel, what we don't feel, what we can experience, what isn't present presented to us, it's all part of this practice because it is, it's an exploration, it's a practice, it's really not so much goal-centered, although it's wonderful for getting rid of chronic pain and, and re-educating re ourselves, our nervous systems, and, and in that way, connecting us to our subtle body as well. And then come into your shoulders and just sense, so the shoulder girdle, if you're not familiar with that term, you can feel or visualize the outer shoulder or your outer arm. What we would say is actually your arm, right? But then come all the way across the front of the chest through the collarbones and to the sternum and just below the sternum into the chest cavity. So this whole front all the way to the center of the chest cavity is your shoulder girdle. And then on the back side, you're going to feel it resting on the ground. You may feel coming inward through the shoulder blades and all the way to the center of the spine. So I include the spinal column itself in the shoulder girdle, that upper portion of your thoracic spine. So just familiarizing yourself with these two areas. And then all of, I call, <laughs> I, I call it the sandwich, and you have your pelvic girdle and your shoulder girdle, and then feel the soft tissue in the front in between. So this soft, sweet area that we want to be soft right now, the, the area of your abdominal wall underneath your rib cage, and notice how your breathing is moving this area just in a gentle, natural way. Just noticing and feeling your breath. And from a standpoint of the pelvis and the shoulders, as you breathe in, is there any change in the weight distribution or do you feel like you need to, sometimes your body, as you begin to pay attention to your breath, your body will want to adjust itself just by breathing, by breathing to the diaphragm. And allow yourself to do that. So if you need to make any adjustments. And at this point, if your legs are straight, please bend your knees and place your feet on the ground into your constructive rest position. So reminding yourself, ankle, knee, and hip about the same distance. 
But with this constructive rest, I'm going to have you walk your feet wider towards the edges of the mat. If you kind of roll your head and look, your heels should be to the outer edge of your hip. So we want the feet wider than slightly wider than the hips. My kneecaps are pointing up and I might place a hand on my right leg to keep it still. We're going to start with the left leg. So this is what I call a single windshield wiper. You can feel the pinky toe side of your left leg and the big toe side. Just sensing that area. As you breathe in, you're going to tip onto the pinky toe side of the left leg. And you're just, you can kind of open it up. Don't push it too far. We're getting right into the inner groin this morning. But you're going to roll onto that pinky toe side. So external rotation of the hip. As you exhale, come back up. And then as you inhale, tip onto the big toe side as far as you can go. So that's internal rotation of your hip. Very simple. We'll go through these. It's simple to start. Feel the movement as a whole through the leg line. So if you're doing it to your breath and you don't have to, inhaling and opening to one side. Exhale, we use our abdominal wall and maybe pelvic floor muscles to draw back in. Inner thigh will engage. Inhale, tip into the big toe side. And exhale, feel that outer hip fire up to lift the leg back up. So just going back and forth. But what you can experience, experience or experiment with is we now know we can make the same movement, but from different joints. So what does it feel like to initiate this movement from your hip and your thigh? Do a couple like that. Maybe try doing it from your knee. Can you visualize your knee and isolating this movement so that it's your knee, your, the rest of the leg, leg is going to follow, but your knee is leading that. Like you're reaching your kneecap in one direction and the other. And then you can also do the same with your ankle. So I can, this is that in the very beginning we did inversion and eversion of the ankle. So now we're bringing, bringing that in to let the whole leg line follow. I can go into inversion as the leg falls outward and then come back up on exhale and then evert the ankle and the whole thigh bone comes into that internal rotation, the hip comes in. So we start to see how all these things are interconnected. And if we have an issue, for instance, with our foot not having the mobility it needs, it's going to affect the internal and external rotation of the hip. And as I said, the hip, the, the feet are the, um, the brains of the spine. So if you, if you have a hard time initiating from any of these joints, then my thought is to really work on making that more easeful. Work on the joint that's harder to initiate. It's probably really easy to move from your hip, typically, and your thigh, because those are your biggest muscles, biggest, biggest bone, right? That nice, big, strong femur bone. And just do a few more of these. And then come back up. And then we're going to do the same thing on the right side. So pause for a moment. Just feel. Feel your two legs. That foot is slightly wider. And notice when I'm doing this, so if I were still doing my left leg, I'm not letting my right leg fall. I'm independently doing one leg at a time. So now the left knee is going to point up towards the sky. Left thigh stays still. I'm going to feel the pinky toe and big toe side of my right foot. Outer thigh, inner thigh. Inhale out to the right. Feel that nice inner groin stretch. Exhale, come back up. Inhale into the left. So like you're reaching your femur bone towards the front left corner of the mat. Exhale, come up. The other reason I do one leg at a time is because you may notice a difference. Like your internal rotation, might, your one hip might go a lot further out to the side or might go a lot further internally, right? So you're just noticing that. How close does the outer knee come to the ground and how close does the inner knee come to the ground? So these will tell us some things about imbalance in our body, not in a judgmental way, but to be aware of them. So you might be moving from your hip instinctually and your thigh, but see if you can make this movement from your knee. So let different joints take their turn leading this movement. And then you can also do it from the foot, the ankle. That inversion as the whole thigh bone reaches, so the leg is following the pattern of the foot. Come back up on exhale. And then evert, so you're coming out of the pinky toe side, letting that ankle roll. It's interesting, um, I, talking to a lot of physios and PTs, the, 
They don't do this quite as much in the United States, but a lot of places, particularly Australia, when people have back pain, one of the first things they check is the mobility in their ankles. Yeah, so we, again, we see how all of this is interconnected. And you're letting your leg just be playful, the whole leg line, whether it's following the movement of the foot or the hip or the knee joint. We'll do one more round. One leg at a time, so you can kind of compare, not in a judgmental way, but just in a way to be aware. Then we'll come back to the center. And before we do the next one, hug your knees into your chest. Maybe rock on your low back. Reconnect anything that's touching the ground, the back of the pelvis, the shoulders, the spine in between. So like the, we've got the pelvis and the shoulders and the, I call, I call it the soft, chewy center right here. This beautiful center, soft belly. And then we're going to take that position again. And now if you're familiar with yoga, we'll do both legs at the same time. So more like a windshield wiper style. And, but think, so now we have you thinking, what are we doing? The two legs are doing opposite things. So as you're inhaling, you're tipping onto the big toe side of the left foot, pinky toe side of the right foot. So the left leg is going to internally rotate. The right leg is going to externally rotate. So I want you to think about that as a movement pattern. Inhale, come back up. And then exhale, big toe side of right foot, little toe side of left foot. So I know that windshield wipers is a big one in, in yoga, and I see people, you know, because it feels good, right? But I want you to think about the movement patterns that are happening. Your, your hips, your thighs, your feet, your ankles are doing opposite things right now. And you can begin to get, whoops, a little further into that. Just think of drawing your thigh bones forward, and you'll feel a little more arch. So that top leg, you're going to feel the arch in your waist. So that's where we begin to move even further up the body. The pelvis in the last one was stable. We weren't rocking the pelvis when we were doing one leg. Now we're taking that movement upward into the torso purposely. Let your waist, so when I'm legs drop to the left, I'm going to feel my right waist stretching and arching. Feels great. And then they go the other way. And just staying present to feel this. Know that you can keep doing it in movement. You can also stop anytime you want and just be still and breathe. Always checking to see if you have any experience of muscles that are, you know, helping you to lift the legs back up and get stuck. Just pause for a moment and be still. If you've been doing this all from your hips, see if you can direct it from your ankles. And what I find is that when I do it from my ankles, it's a much smaller movement. I don't have the same feeling of range of mobility. This is me moving from my ankles versus this is me moving from my hips. A lot more arch through the waist and it comes into the torso. But I like to do both. And if you have grumpy knees, be sure to let your knees lead this movement as well. So we're going to let the head start to ride or go along for the ride. So as your knees fall to one side, just let your head turn towards the opposite shoulder. Just very gently let it turn and then come back up. And then knees fall to the other side and head. So the weight of the head is resting on the ground. We're rolling towards the opposite shoulder. We're playing in the pelvis right now, but we're making this a tail to tongue movement letting the head roll in the opposite direction of the legs. And then just see what happens. So this is all about repattering movement, right? So see what happens if you let your head roll in the same direction of the legs. Was that a, a moment of a brain fart where you had to think about it? And again, that's all it is, is we're breaking down those patterns of movement. Let's do one or two more rounds. Feel free to stop and hold if you'd like. Even notice the way you're rolling through the soles of your feet, right? Feet are grounded. It's hard for me to do my head when I'm trying to look at the camera, so hopefully you're in your body experiencing this movement. And then before we switch into the shoulder girdle, I am going to have you take your legs out long and feel free to put something underneath the knees and just be still. 
same position we started in when we first did that little scan. And I want you to notice, again, your pelvic girdle and your shoulder girdle. And any differences, or you can even go from the toes up to the pelvis and the fingers into the shoulders. Any weight distribution change, if one hip was heavier or lighter, is that still present? Do the shoulders feel more or less grounded? Do you feel any difference in your neck? Just, just sense your body. We're doing kind of an inventory. Has anything changed? Just by doing that simple movement of internal, external rotation of the hips and legs. When you place your hands on your belly again, feel your soft, chewy center. Are you breathing differently? So I think of the sandwich like the pelvis and the shoulders have to stabilize all of this area in the middle, including your spine in the back. The spine, of course, stabilizes itself. But we've got all of our organs in the front, and it's soft tissue here, right? It's fairly vulnerable. So how do we protect that soft tissue, top and bottom of the torso? But sometimes what happens is that protection never gets a break. We want those muscles to move through the range of motion. And then we'll remove the blanket and place your feet back into constructive rest. <clears throat> we do something called cactus arms. And if you're familiar with that one, you're a step ahead here. But I'm going to have you take your arms out to your sides so that your wrists are at the height of your shoulders. And then you're going to bend your elbows so that your arms are in a 90 degree angle. So my wrist crease is over my elbow and my elbow is in line with my shoulder. And I'm just going to let the hands be floppy. Hands floppy, fingers floppy. So this is actually a movement from the shoulder girdle, which the way you're going to feel it is think of moving from your upper arms, like your arms are like rolling pins. And you're going to, you're going to inhale and just let the arms fall forward and notice that you're going to keep that 90 degree angle. You don't want the arms to fall out to the sides or the hands. You're going to keep the 90 degrees. And just notice for yourself, I'm really tight today. Notice for yourself how close your fingers come to the ground. So this is the internal rotation of your arm bones. What you might sense is the way the tops of the shoulders are lifting off the ground. So you can feel that. And you might feel more pressure in the shoulder blade area, kind of sticking its way into the ground. But also see, you'll, you'll be able to see just like with the hips in internal rotation, one might be tighter or looser than the other. And that'll be indicated the fingers that are closer to the ground, you have more mobility in that side. And then we'll lift back up and we'll go the other way. So you're going to let your hands fall overhead, keeping that L shape and letting them fall. So this is your external rotation of your arms. And now you might sense the way that the tops of the shoulders that were just lifting off the ground are more pressing into the ground. And you might even feel a little bit of lift or lightness behind the shoulder blades where they were pushing into the ground on internal rotation. Also noticing maybe one arm feels tighter or looser than the other. So we just do this little assessment for ourselves first, and then we're going to move this. So lift back up to this is our neutral position. We'll come back to neutral with every exhale. You're going to do alternate arms. So as you inhale, we'll start left arm will fall down and right arm will go overhead. Exhale, come back to the center. Inhale, opposite direction. Right arm down by your hip, left arm overhead. Exhaling back. Trying your best to keep that 90 degree angle, but have fun with it. And noticing how, just like with the hips, your arms are doing opposite things. So as the left arm comes down by your hip, the top of the left shoulder will lift. As the right arm goes overhead, the top of the right shoulder presses into the ground. So you can really, we use the floor, we use the ground to feel. That's our GPS. And we can feel the way our body is moving by where is their pressure into the ground, where is their lifting away from the ground. And then we're going to add the head to this one. So we're just letting the arms go back and forth. Note that I'm not, I'm really trying to keep my wrists and my fingers relaxed. I'm not tightening those. And I, I think of it as the shoulder girdle will move, but I also feel the arms rotate internally and externally, just like I said, like rolling pins. So now I want you to turn your head as you're inhaling towards the top arm. 
Exhale, roll the head back to center. So just add that neck movement. This is a good warm up for tomorrow, by the way. Tomorrow we're going to do nothing but neck, <laughs> all neck tomorrow, which means shoulders too, because they're really, they're like twins. So we're rolling the head towards the top arm. Weight of the head heavy. Think your head weighs 12 pounds. And just like we did internal, external rotation of the pelvis, feel your shoulders doing that same thing for you. Do one or two more looking at the top arm. Always, if you don't want to do it to the breath, that's fine. I time it to the breath mainly so that I keep my falling down or falling towards the ground and lifting back up. I time it so it's the same. Nice, graceful movement. But also, I think inhaling is the reaching away opposite directions. Exhale, come back to neutral. And then see if you can just switch and turn your head towards the bottom hand. That's all we're doing differently. And you'll notice how it's like your shoulder's almost lifting up towards your nose as your bottom hand drops. You'll feel a tightening through that side of the neck. Whichever way you're looking, that, that side of the neck and the top of the shoulder will shorten and sort of squeeze. Like your shoulder's squeezing towards your chin. And then we release it as we exhale. So switching the direction. And if switching the direction was hard or you find one direction is more difficult than the other, just make sure you do both, but work on that direction that's harder to turn in. That's breaking down those movement patterns. Let's do one last round. And then let your hands just fall into your body for a moment. Feel your shoulders. Let's pull our legs in again. We've been in constructive rest, I know. So you feel free to roll around on your low back, your sacrum, any position for your legs that feels good. Keep that spine long and relaxed. Okay, so we know we can move the pelvis. We can do internal, external rotation of the legs. We know we can move the shoulders, do internal, external rotation of the arms. Can we do both together? And can we do them together, but in opposite directions? So this is a big thing. I call it independent suspension of the girdles. That's just my made up little term. Because we want to, you know, typically in life when we're going somewhere, it's like the, the pelvis and the shoulder generally are following each other. And what usually happens is the head is leading that, right? You're turning around in the back of your seat. It's this, right? So what we want to be able to do is a rotation. We want to be able to let the pelvis and the shoulders have a mind of their own, for lack of a better term, and make their own choice which direction they want to go. Because otherwise we get stuck in those movement patterns of everything on one side of the body tightens. Maybe everything doesn't have to. Maybe just the pelvis needs to, right? So... <clears throat> That's a little explanation on doing these, the double wipers. So you're going to go back into that wider version of your, um, of your constructive rest. So my heels are, I can feel my heels. I have long arms, but I can feel my heels and see them to the outside. And then I'm taking those cactus arms, or we'll call them goalpost arms since this is a March Madness thing. I don't think I can work it into basketball, but and taking a moment there to pause. And we're going to do uh, both legs now. It's a little more difficult sometimes with just one leg. So we'll let, we'll let you do both legs. <clears throat> As you breathe in, feel the big toe side of your left foot and pinky toe side of the right foot. Just notice those first. Can you see them? And then feel your arms. And your left arm is going to go overhead and your right arm is going to come down by your hip. So it's going to be an inhalation. Legs will fall to the right, if you want to just think of it that way. Left arm overhead, right arm down by your hip. That's my inhale. So now I'm creating even more arch through that left side, more length, because the arm is going into external rotation as the hip is going into internal rotation. So left side, that's the left side. And then I exhale, come back to center. I'm going to do the opposite. So go slow through a few so you can kind of let your mind gather the information, what's happening. You're going to fall onto the pinky toe side of the left foot, big toe side of the right foot. Let them fall. 
and then left arm is going to come down by the hip, right arm overhead. So right thigh is in internal rotation, right arm is in external rotation. They're doing opposite things. They, they get to function independently, independent suspension, and then come back up. So find it first in a nice, clear way that you're visualizing what's happening here. And then, so that's the intellectual part. See if you can let some of that go and feel and just be playful. And then what you'll find, if it doesn't happen naturally, you can ask it to, invite it to, is let the head roll towards the top arm bone. The weight of the head is resting on the ground, fully supported. Notice how now we're really, really into the torso, that soft, chewy center. You get to stretch, and you can inhale and really reach that thigh bone forward. And if it feels good, I start to add a little extension of the arm overhead too. So we're getting more stretching, more length through that side body, in this case, the left side. And then I exhale, come back to the center. So option to really reach the thigh, reach the arm, and then come back. The other thing you can do is you can focus on getting that <clears throat> internally rotating arm a little further into the internal rotation. So if I'm going to let my legs fall to the left, reach my right arm overhead, I can purposely roll, I can lift the left arm bone and roll it in, tighten it. So now I'm feeling tightness through the collarbones and I feel sp so tightness through the left side, space through the right side. I'm going to reach. I might even hold that for a moment. Exhale, back to neutral. So left arm is externally rotating and reaching as legs go to the right. Right arm is internally rotating. I can roll it in like I'm trying to touch the outer arm towards my collarbone and then letting go. So play with this movement for a moment. And all of these are like juggling balls, right? So if you're like, oh my gosh, it's too much to extend the arms, or it doesn't feel right. If you have to overthink it, then go back one step, remove one of those juggling balls. Maybe the head doesn't want to move today. That's okay too. Acceptance, right? I was going to do this before our practice and I didn't. And now I'm saying, oh, thank goodness we did this today because I think I needed it. So just Focusing. Internal extra rotation, one of the simplest things we do with the hips and the arms, the opposite direction. And then if it feels okay, and if you want to just give yourself another little, little brain test, see if you can turn your head towards the side where the knees are falling, the internally rotated arm. So similar to when we were doing just the cactus arms, you're going to feel this tightness through the top of that shoulder because you're internally rotating and your chin's going to come down towards the shoulder. And then we come back to center. And then you can turn towards that bottom arm. And for some of you, that might feel like the more natural way. That's okay too. Typically, it's easier to look out over the top arm but see what comes naturally for you and always do the opposite. So one of the other things I like to play with, it is play, it's playtime this morning, right? Is different distances between the feet. So I've been keeping my feet fairly wide. I could actually go wider. Then I'm going to feel more stretch in that outer hip. So you could widen your feet apart. The other thing is you can bring your feet together. See what it feels like to bring your legs together. Hmm, totally different stretch. For me, it doesn't go as much into the side body. I feel it more into the legs. And you're just taking a few of these. Anytime you need to pause, you can pause and stop for a moment. Last few. And then stopping, and we're going to be still again. So please feel free to take a blanket underneath your knees. I'd like you to let the legs come into extension. 
Your arms can be at your sides or on your body. And notice what feels best for your shoulders. So just like I can shake my legs out and see do they want to be wider apart or closer together, what, what I try to do is where can my legs be that my pelvis is most relaxed and also the legs. But generally, if the pelvis is relaxed, the legs will relax. And where can my arms be that my shoulder girdle is most relaxed? So little things, and we now know if I flip my palms up, my arms are in external rotation. Does that feel right for your shoulder blades? And if you're a Shavasana queen, like I am, that's important. What's most, what's most comfortable for your shoulders versus palms down is internal rotation. And typically that's not real comfortable because you can see the shoulders are going to lift off the ground. Or maybe you like to place your hands on your body or neutral position would be pinky fingers down. So then it's more of that arm is just in its natural position, right? And that lends itself for me, hands on the body. But explore what feels most grounding and most supportive. How can you let the floor support the two girdles? What's the best way to do that right now? And of course, you can roll your shoulders, jelly roll your legs, or bounce your knees like basketballs. But we're going to take a moment just to be here and be present in, in the lovely girdles, <laughs> the shoulders and the pelvis. And acknowledging your beautiful chewy center in between. Maybe notice if your head and neck feels different. We did some neck movements. So this was a full body movement today. You can sense your respiration. We were able to stretch some of the respiratory muscles out in the ribs, intercostal muscles. And just breathing in a way that you're mindful using your diaphragm, what's changed, what stayed the same. Being present in the space of your body, letting it communicate with you. That's what this is, it's a communication practice. But usually we're doing all the talking and we talk to our bodies and sometimes we say things that aren't so friendly and kind. Let your body talk to you every now and again and listen. Listen with an open, accepting, compassionate heart. Thank you for joining me today for the girdles. Again, tomorrow is all neck, nothing but neck. And we'll be doing more work into the torso too. So uh, we'll get, get further into that. Hands are at my heart center in honor of you. Please feel free to make sure um, if you want the PDFs, you can sign up on Patreon because then you get the sheet for today and all the other ones. And uh, follow me. be sure to subscribe to my channel. I've noticed that uh, of all the people that are watching these, only about 30% are subscribed. So please subscribe to my channel. We do get uh, monetized based on how many subscribers we have on YouTube. So that's a big thing for us. But peace, joy. Love and light. And those of you that are with me live feed this morning, thank you for being here.